The Alchemist is one of the most respected producers hip hop has ever known. There's a reason why his career has lasted multiple decades and why he's one of the few producers from the 90s who's still relevant today. But how did he achieve this? What does The Alchemist do differently than every other producer? Today we're going to uncover this by analyzing his beats and breaking down four unique and really smart ideas that he uses in his production that you can start using to improve your own beats. But before we start, this might be the second or third video of mine that you've ever seen. And if you've enjoyed my videos, please consider hitting like and subscribe because it really does help my channel out. So let's start off with number one. If you watch YouTube tutorials to learn how to make beats, almost everyone will tell you that melodies are the most important part of any beat. Producers seem to think that the more melodic their beat is, the more girls will be impressed by them. Everyone's obsessed over melodies. But The Alchemist is living proof this isn't the only way to make beats. Let's take a look at the production behind Broken Bottles by Benny the Butcher. Yeah. I got a large bag of clips, hard hats and sticks. My squad tagging shit, y'all catch a tip. Here I'm going to use Wave Candy, a free tool in FL Studio. And what this is going to do is tell you what notes are playing in any piece of audio. In case you want to learn how to use this, the link is in the corner. Most beats will look something like this, where you have notes going all over the place. This is showing us that this beat is very melodic. But take a look at the note readout for Broken Bottles. You can see it's not melodic at all. It's the same notes repeating over and over again. So if we're told that melodies are so important, how does this beat still work? This is a really important idea, and it's one that I learned by listening to so many of the Alchemist beats, which is how to make your beats interesting through texture instead of musicality. If I asked you to recreate the music in this beat, it would be easy. Again, it's the same note repeating over and over again. But if I asked you to recreate the texture in this beat, good luck. It would be near impossible just to listen to this sound. You probably couldn't explain what this sound or instrument even is. And this is one way you can rethink your approach to making beats. The next time you're looking through loops or samples, stop trying to find musical loops or listening to how melodic a sample is. And instead, just try to look for unique textures. And when you find one, turn that into a beat. But there's one more idea in the Alchemist beat that helps make it work. Obviously, if you were to make a beat like this, it could easily start to feel repetitive. So let's listen to Broken Bottles and try to analyze how the Alchemist keeps his beat from feeling repetitive. Hopefully you picked up on the amount of detail in this beat. When you make beats, you might use very typical transition sounds like a reverse crash, or maybe you don't even use these types of sounds at all in your beat. But with broken bottles, let's count how many different sounds and textures are used just as smaller details within the first 10-ish bars. So that's the first one here, which is a synth rise. I once again have no idea what the sound could even be described as, but that's two unique sounds so far. A snare roll, which doesn't show up often in this beat, so we'll count that as number three. Here we have number four, which is actually two layers on top of each other, so we'll call this four and five. It's a horn with some scratches on top. You can hear just the horn separated later on. Then we have number six. What sounds like a synth stab with some bass layered underneath. That weird sound shows up again for the second time here. And then seven, what sounds like a chime. So within the first 10-ish bars, we have seven different unique textures, only one of which shows up multiple times. The Alchemist goes the extra distance when it comes to creating detail in his beats, and this helps them sound less repetitive. So if you have trouble turning your loop into a full beat without it becoming boring, use this idea. Next, let's take a look at another beat produced by The Alchemist, Willie Lloyd by Freddie Gibbs. This is something that The Alchemist has been doing more and more recently. Most people consider him to be a boom bap producer, but let's analyze this beat. First, what BPM is it? Yeah. 
We have a 61-ish BPM beat, which is far away from the traditional BPMs for boom bap. Next, let's analyze the hi-hat pattern. Yeah. This is not a very common hi-hat pattern from boom bap either. If we listen to what the musical instruments are doing in this sample, it's a very short, repetitive, arpeggiating sound. And if we isolate the low end in this beat and take a listen, we have this bass that's programmed like an 808. We effectively have a trap beat here that uses the ingredients of a boom bap beat. And this is a big lesson that you can use for your own production. Rethink your approach to genre. This can be a great way to develop your own sound. By taking the structure of one genre and using sounds from another, you can get some really interesting outcomes. For example, let's take this sample here. Instead of starting off with a boom bap BPM, I'm gonna set this to 65. Next, I'm gonna make an arpeggiating loop with this sample. Then I'm gonna take this boom bap sounding hi-hat. But instead of making a boom bap pattern, I'm gonna make a drill hi-hat pattern. And I'll do the same thing with my remaining drum sounds and bass. Now I have a unique starting point for my beat, a sort of boom bap drill hybrid. So don't be afraid to rethink genre whenever you make beats. Now let's take a look at yet another beat of his, one of my favorites because of how imaginative it is. This is Legendary Mesh by Him and Evidence. What this beat does is something that I personally feel like I need to do more of. You and I are probably both guilty of taking spaces for granted. Let me know if this sounds familiar. You start your beat and you might use a sample or create a loop from scratch. Then when it comes time to build on it, you just start to go into autopilot. You grab your hi-hat and you make a typical pattern and you do the same with your snare and your kick. And you do this because it's what you've seen everyone else do or it's just what you're used to doing. But take a listen to Legendary Mesh and listen to the hi hats in this beat. You've probably noticed there is no hi hat. Instead, we have this insanely weird percussive sound playing. And this is what I mean by taking spaces for granted. When it comes to filling up the high end of our beat, we might grab a typical hi hat to do that job. When it comes to filling up the low end, we might take for granted that our 808 or bass guitar will do that job. But if we start to rethink how we fill up our spaces, we can get to so much more unique ideas. So let's fill up the high end with this unusual percussion loop and this tambourine swell. And for the low end, I have these acid-ish basses that I never use. So let's use these for our low end. Now suddenly my beat feels a lot more interesting and unique because I chose to fill up spaces in non-typical ways. There's just a lot that we can learn from the alchemist. So if you found this video helpful, I do have another video showing four actual hands-on beat making techniques that he uses. So if you use what you learned in this video along with the one next to me, you'll be equipped to possibly become the next legendary producer. Maybe, I don't know. But check out the video, it's one of my best and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're having a good day. But yeah, click the video.